protesters throwing bottles and other projectiles at police, pulling a metal barricade. A police officer pepper sprays the crowd. This is unfolding before Philly PD Sergeant John McBride's eyes and his body-worn camera. Maintain! 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 McBride normally patrols in the 25th District in the Logan area, but on May 30th, he is dispatched to Center City, sent to a protest at the Municipal Services Building. It is the first day of protest in Philadelphia following the death of George Floyd. The mayor's office and the city controller each hired consultants to review the PPD's response. Those reports say police were outnumbered, ill-equipped, and unprepared to deal with the crowds and civil unrest. McBride pointed that out that day. We need backups. This, this single line here with no shields. Former Denver Police Chief Robert White is one of the consultants who reviewed the city's preparations, or lack of, and its response to the protest. Unlike in other cities, Philly was caught off guard. But White says that shouldn't have happened. Chaos was unfolding in other cities days prior, and PPD had intelligence that a protest of up to 3,600 people was planned for May 30th. He had a plan to address the demonstrations, uh, but the plan was not extensive enough to address the violence and the looting that occurred. At the time, Danielle Outlaw had been Philly's police commissioner for three months. She says other police and city officials told her protest in Philly didn't get violent. I had no reason not to believe that what they were saying was true. When she received the department's plan for the protest that May 30th, it was thin on details and it only called for 53 cops. We just didn't have enough people. But without advance notice, it was hard to call in more police. The plan also did not have a contingency plan in case of civil unrest. Was that concerning to you? Um, initially, no. Initially, no. That proved to be detrimental. As we can see and hear from McBride's body camera, they weren't equipped to handle the hostile crowds. National Guard should have been called in. This is ridiculous. The city provided an hour and 20 minutes of McBride's body camera video. It gives us a first-hand account of what police were faced with that day. We also hear the radio chatter as protesters are breaking windows at City Hall. Oh, it looks like they're gaining entry at City Hall. Looting stores all along Walnut Street. Request more units, 1500, 1600, Chestnut and Walnut. All the stores are getting broken into. Protesters attempt to pull down the Rizzo statue. They light police cars on fire. Do you think you let them down in a way in terms of the planning that went into this and what they had? Yeah, to do? I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm the police commissioner. So, you know, I will, I, like I said, I'm responsible for everyone here, not just community, but I'm responsible for uh, the safety of my rank and file. She says it wasn't just one decision or action that led to the police's now criticized response to the protest. What we're talking about is a culture. What we're talking about is a history of how we train. What we're talking about is a history of planning. For the investigators, I'm Claudia Vargas, NBC 10 News. Now, Outlaw is facing calls for a resignation over the handling of the protest. She says she's not going anywhere. Coming up tomorrow on NBC 10 News at 5, the NBC 10 investigators ask Commissioner Outlaw about that decision to use tear gas during the civil unrest. The tactic was last used 35 years earlier during the move bombing. And to see more of that exclusive body camera video, go to NBC10.com slash unpreparedpolice.